Hi. Well, I'm, I'm afraid I don't have a wrap for black holes, but uh, I'm just going to talk. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to, um, I'd like to, sh I mean, everyone's heard, heard of black holes, um, but um, some people may think, well, it's just a bunch of, you know, science fiction rubbish. Um, but I'm going to show um, proof that uh, they do exist. And uh, I also want to m uh, say that we nobody will ever fall into one. That's what all the science fiction movies say, but actually that's true. And um, it's very important now, I mean, it's a very exciting time, because uh, very soon we will hopefully get the first image of a black hole. So, in fiction, um, there's a lot of very dodgy uh, science fiction movies about black holes. It's a very popular uh, subject because, um, I mean, because they're mysterious and um, they're, you, you can fall into them and maybe go into another universe and all sorts of strange things happen. So, uh, uh, a lot of people have written, uh, and you've probably watched some of these movies, um, one of the most recent ones, Interstellar. Um, and, and they're good, but... Um, as I say, some of them are um, a little bit taking taking things a little bit too far, but uh, some of them have got some very good points. So, what about reality? In reality, well, let's think about matter. What happens when you squeeze matter? Um, you know, the density of matter in, in the universe in here is about one or few uh, grams per per cubic centimeter. Um, so, if you start squeezing it, um, an apple or whatever. Um, once you start squeezing it, matter will heat up. Uh, the electrons start separating from the nuclei, and you get what is called a plasma. And that's a typical star like the sun. The, and the density is about 100 or so, on average, grams per cubic centimeter. If you squeeze it more, um, what you get is a bunch of electrons in a sea of atomic nuclei. And it's called electron degenerate matter. And there's examples of those out there. Um, they're called white dwarf stars. And, and they weigh about a ton per cubic centimeter. Keep squeezing and the electrons join the protons and you get what's called neutron degenerate matter. It's basically made of neutrons. Uh, a neutron star, and they exist as well, uh, this weighs about 100 million tons per cubic centimeter. You keep squeezing more. I mean, this is way beyond what we can do. <laughs> um, uh, the, the, gen the, the quarks in the neutrons start to, um, changing form and what you call, um, th this becomes what's called quark degenerate matter, and uh, there are theories about things called strange stars made of strange matter. And strange is a real name, not just strange. Um, they're a bit more theoretical, but if you keep squeezing it even more, nothing can stop the material from, uh, n gravity takes over and nothing can stop it from, from just collapsing. And uh, eventually it will collapse to a single point, it's called a singularity. And that's where uh, you get the black hole, and that's where the density goes to infinity. Um, people don't like infinities, especially in physics, but uh, at the moment, that's what we think it is. The density is now infinite. Um, so, what, uh, what, what, what is a black hole? Here's a, here's a sort of two-dimensional picture of what is a three-dimensional, uh, actually a four-dimensional object. And this is a simulation that I did last night. Um, the matter falls down to a point. As I say, it's a singularity, and uh, this is this sort of represents the space-time distortion. So, and it's three-dimensional space-time, but this is a two-dimensional picture of three-dimensional space-time. You get a point like there. Um, the other point, the other point, the other important feature is that the escape velocity, in other words, how fast you have to get to go to actually get away from it, becomes greater than the speed of light. And uh, you probably heard of the event horizon. That's uh, sort of s a distance, certain distance from the star, from the from the singularity, where you just can't escape. There's no way out. You can't go faster than light, so you can't escape. The other point is sc space-time is distorted, extremely distorted around this. So, um, so actually, as you get closer to the singularity, time goes slower. So, in fact, as you approach the singularity, if you're looking at someone, if I was going towards a singular if this was a black hole and I was going towards the singularity, I get to the, uh, I was going towards the vent horizon, time gets slower and slower, and as I approach the vent horizon, time stops. So actually, if I was looking at, at someone approaching the uh, vent horizon, uh, I would not, s I would see them just slowing down and they would actually get fainter and fainter, but they would never go inside the event horizon. So to me, that person never goes inside the event horizon. 
to that person, the time is going at their own rate, so they go in, no problem. Except there's a slight problem that they will get infinitely distorted, stretched out infinitely, and um, heated to several million degrees and uh, irradiated by a huge radiation field. But apart from that, they'll be fine. So, um, so, so that's what happens. Now, are they real? I mean, I've just put some theories up. Well, I'm just going to show you some pictures which show that they are. Um, so there are, we'll start off with small black holes. These are sort of st black holes the size of the sun, or, or a few times the sun. And the closest black hole to Earth, is believed, or probably the closest, is called Cygnus X1. It's the brightest X-ray source in the sky. And I bet you can't guess which one it is. Um, it's actually that thing there. Um, it's, a, it's a black hole. You can't see the black hole because it's black. Um, but it's next to a very bright star, and that's the star. And uh, it's 6,000 light years from Earth. So it's fairly close on cosmic scale. That's believed to be the closest. Um, that's louder than I was expecting. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so the, this picture, the, okay, thanks. Um, this is, a, this is a, the extra proof of a black hole. This was discovered, these are gravitational waves that you probably heard of. We were discovered a few, very few, small number of years ago, three years ago, I think. After 30 years of searching, people never thought they would find them, but they did. Einstein thought that we'd, we'd never see it, because he thought it would be impossible to find a black hole, uh, um, a gravitational wave. But, um, but there, since there are enough detectors in the US, in Hanford and Livingston, and what you see here is the, um, the, these vibrations are as th there are two, black two small black holes coming in towards each other, approaching and uh, colliding, merging. Here's a simulation of that. Uh, this is a real simulation using uh, very fast computers. And you see the distortions of the, the stars behind it are being distorted by the, by the, uh, radiation, by the uh, gravitational field of the black holes. And uh, eventually, they'll collide. The collision is the most energetic event in the universe, apart from the Big Bang. In, in, in a few milliseconds there, that point, um, there's a more energy released in that one black hole collision than all the uh, rest of the stars in the universe put together in one event. So uh, instantaneous, or almost instantaneously, you're turning three solar masses, three times the solar mass of uh, material into uh, energy, so, which is a huge amount of energy. And that's why you can detect them at the other, end, other side of the universe. So that's, and that's the proof of the black holes. So you, you cannot do that anyway, apart from through black holes. So those are small black holes. What about big ones? Um, uh, there are massive black holes, and uh, we are actually orbiting one. Um, every 200 million years, we go around one. And uh, here's a picture of uh, the telescopes in northern Chile handily pointing. This is a laser guide star, handily pointing to why it, where it is. This is the galactic center. Um, they are actually observing the galactic center, and they use these lasers. Um, this is um, 20,000 light years away, something like that. And uh, the black hole, the reason we know it's a black hole is here's a time-lapse image of about 15 years of photography of, right of, the, of the stars right in the center. And you can see these stars are all moving. They're all going past them, particularly these ones. They're actually orbiting something. Uh, and their, their orbital period is about 20 years. And I'm afraid I'm going to write, I'm going to show one equation so, so I'm not supposed to do this, but you can prove that that is a black hole. It's orbiting. There's Kepler, Kepler's third law. It's a very simple equation. It relates the, the per orbital period to the radius of the orbit and the mass of the thing that it's orbiting. And you put the numbers in, and here's the here's the, here's the close-up of the image. The answer is three million stars, three million suns. The, the the thing in the center of the galaxy weighs three million times the mass of the sun, but there's nothing there. His, 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 if you zoom in, there's apparently nothing there. So it's a black hole. It has to be a black hole. There's nothing else it can be. So those are, those are medium-sized black holes, large black holes. And, the, gal and the, the black hole in the center of uh, our galaxy is pretty inactive. Not much is happening. But if you start putting black holes near uh, stars or near, near uh, clouds, molecular clou uh, clouds, things start happening because you can basically the, the, the star will orbit the black hole and get, and like I showed in that picture earlier, 
water going down the plug hole, it spins up. This is a simulation uh, using uh, um, many weeks of supercomputer time uh, where they put in general relativity and magnetohydrodynamics and horrible, all sorts of horrible maths. And uh, basically, this is what you expect. These are supposed to be magnetic field lines. And what you expect is there's sort of this disk and then these jets. So as the material falls in, it's, some of it gets spun out. <coughs> And that's, uh, these are active black holes. Um, we know that they exist because here's two examples. And this, these are very common. These are whole galaxies. The, this is a galaxy that's somewhat bigger than our galaxy. And here's another one. And uh, you see these massive jets. These are jets from right in the center. And these, these, these are big. These are called supermassive black holes. These are the biggest ones we know about. The 55 million solar masses and up to a few billion solar masses. The biggest one is about 10 billion solar masses. And uh, we can zoom in. Uh, this is a very big picture. Like I said, this is the size of our galaxy. So it's many times the size of a galaxy, a jet coming from the center. Um, and here is another example. This is actually uh, one of the nearest supermassive black hole, the nearest supermassive black hole. It's called uh, M87, Messier 87. It's a nearby elliptical galaxy. And you can see the jet. And if you zoom in to the right with the radio telescopes, you can zoom in right to the center there, many times, you know, hundreds of times closer. And uh, this is what you see. Uh, this is a time lapse over a few days. Uh, you can't see the black hole. It's hidden in there. But what you can see is the jet coming out from it, and it goes up to many thousands of light years, or tens of thousands of light years. This central black hole is two and a half billion times the mass of the sun. So it's a thousand times bigger than the black hole in our galaxy. It's a big one. Um, so can we, those are pictures of what the black hole does to the stuff around it. Can we image the black hole? Well, the black hole is going to be, the, and we measure the size, the apparent size in arc seconds, and it's 50 micro arc seconds. To give you a, uh, this is the black hole in the center of our galaxy, if you wanted to measure, image that. To give you a scale, that, that's equivalent to uh, an orange on the, on the moon. That's, that's, that's what we need to see. That's a thousand times more small, uh, smaller than the Hubble can see. And to do that, you need a telescope the size of the Earth. Unfortunately, nobody will pay for a telescope the size of the Earth to be built. But what we do is we can link up um, all the telescope, radio telescopes around, around the Earth, in South Pole, Europe, North America, Hawaii, and here in Chile, Alma and Apex in Chile. And, and actually, ALMA provides the biggest uh, collecting area, so it's the most important. Uh, um, uh, and uh, we can link them up, and we can get resolutions that are good enough. Uh, um, and this is a simulation of what we might see. And, and I, I go back to fiction. This is actually a picture from Interstellar, and inter the movie Interstellar. And if you've seen that, they, they show the black hole like this. This actually was developed by uh, Kip Thorne, who is a theorist. He actually wrote a computer programs and gave them to uh, uh, Hollywood, and uh, they, they put them on Interstellar. Um, they had to do a bit of artistic license, but uh, to make it more realistic or something. <laughs> um, but here's a real simulation uh, from the Event Horizon Telescope, which is the consortium that's going to look at black holes. And uh, this is what we see. The, 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 the uh, Event Horizon is this dark patch here. It's black. Right? There really is nothing there, and uh, this stuff is the last orbit. It's the last, it's the material on its last orbit before it disappears from view. Like I said, it doesn't really go into the event horizon, but it just disappears from view. Um, and this is called the black, this is actually here, it's called the black hole shadow. It's, uh, it's what's expected. Um, so the first picture was rather disappointing, but there's a reason for that. We didn't quite, this was done uh, three or four years ago, no, two years ago. And it didn't quite have enough resolution, so it didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't going down to the scale that we wanted. This is the right size that of the expected event horizon. So it's somewhat in there. But, and I just want to end on this, uh, watch this space, because uh, hopefully next month they, there will be a, release, a press release of uh, an image of, uh, of this, which does have enough resolution. And I'm not, uh, I haven't seen it, but... Uh, and, um, it's extremely sensitive uh, p politically, but uh, um, they will, they're pretty confident apparently that they have imaged the first black hole. Thank you. <laughs>